So we are. All right, so we are officially recorded and so welcome. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Jennifer Lucy Tyler. I am a Logos National presenter and I have been hosting this series called Study With Me uh, with Logos where I have been uh, just doing these webinars with a lot of different incredible pastors and Bible teachers where we get into how to use logos. And so I'm here with Jada Edwards and I'm excited for her to introduce herself. I know a lot of you already know who she is and she is an incredible Bible teacher with uh, doing a lot of great things in the great state of Texas. And I just want uh, Jada, if you could introduce yourself and then we'll get into why we're doing this and what we're gonna show tonight. Yes, absolutely. Uh, everyone, hello, good evening, happy Wednesday. My name is Jada Edwards, and <clears throat> my husband and I have a church. <clears throat> Excuse me. My husband and I have a church called One Community Church, One Community Church in the North Texas area, and uh, he is the lead pastor. We started that church 15 years ago. Both of us are lovers of the Word of God, so we do a lot of teaching, and uh, I teach pretty regularly to our women and our women's Bible study. And I love to write and teach and all the things. Alicia, hey girl. Um, and so this, if you um, have been to our women's Bible studies, you know, the last couple of semesters, we've been walking through the inductive Bible study method. And uh, I've been sharing with you a lot of resources and various approaches to uh, enjoy the study of scripture. And so I thought this would be a fun night for us to learn together. I uh, Logos is new to me. I know it. I'm familiar with the software, but just just got it. So we will be learning together. And um, I think we're going to find some cool things that'll give us some really good study tools if you're interested. So thank you all for being here. Well, I'm excited that we get to learn together, to uh, learn together. because uh, I have been using Logos uh, probably since 2020 or 2019. I think, no, 2020, the pandemic. And that's when I started getting into it. So I don't claim to be a Logos expert, but I am someone who uses it. And I started using it for my inductive Bible study. Uh, that's why I started using it. And then I learned that there were so many other uses uh, to do character studies, topical studies, all different types of studies throughout the word of God. Uh, Logos is just an incredible tool. And I'm going to share that initially it intimidated me because it was so much, but just like the word of God is inexhaustible, right? There's always so many things that we can learn and di and as, as we dive into scripture, you know, sometimes you could read one chapter, one week, and you could read it the same the next week, and the Lord, Holy Spirit will just show you something new and fresh. And so that's how I feel like it is when you're actually using Logos. I'm always learning something new with it. And so this series I'm passionate about because I am, and I'll just say I'm the only woman national presenter with Logos. And I am the first woman of color <laughs> woman presenter with Logos. And so I'm very, very passionate about getting these tools into the hands of women all over the, all over the world, and especially women of color. It's just my, something that I'm really passionate about. So um, I get to do this, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So I'm going to share my logo screen. And you all let me know if you could see that. And as you're joining in again, since we are recording, if you can make sure that when you come in, you're muted, because we don't want to hear you, you know, hear, hear your background. We want you to keep your privacy and all that good stuff, okay? <laughs> but uh, just let me know if you can see this. And all right. So this is my homepage. So let me just explain what you're seeing here. This is a dashboard in Logos. When I log into Logos, this is what I see. And when you have a Logos account, you can customize it to look the way that you want it to look. So to the right of my screen, there's this plus sign where if I want to add a prayer list, 
If I want to add a lectionary, a reading plan, a workflow, and you'll know what that means in a few, um, a daily devotional from my library, I can do that. So it's the first thing that I see when I log into Logos. Uh, there's this explore section, which you could also customize. So I have my explore session showing the word by word Logos blog, because they usually have a lot of different theological topics and things that they're discussing. So this gear here, if I wanted to show other things, maybe today in Christian history or a verse of the day, I can do this and have it show different things. So that's something else uh, that you can do when you're customizing your lo logos. And then if we look to the bottom, bottom left, there's three dots right here. And if I like a lot of people like me, I wear glasses, I don't have them on now, but if I wanted to increase the screen scaling and make it bigger, I can do that uh, right here with these three dots. So um, that's just a quick way of how we customize our screen. But now I want to go into just some basic ways that we can study and use this tool and some really cool features with Logos 10 to help us get the most out of our Bible study. So the first thing first, I'm going to start with, uh, let's say I'm studying 1 Corinthians 13, which is a very familiar passage of scripture to a lot of us in church. We know all about it. <laughs> It's the love chapter, right? And I chose that because, um, Jada, you said you were uh, studying love, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, we talked a little bit on it a couple of semesters ago. So kind of been in a okay. topical study about it. Mm -hmm. So she's doing a topical study on love. I just uh, picked a passage on that that talks about love. And what I'm going to do is type it in here and I'm going to hit this arrow, which is going to open up something called our passage study guide. So what this passage study guide has just done is first it's pulled up uh, this passage of scripture within the Bibles that I have prioritized that I use the most. So I'm a CSB lover and an ESB and an NASB lover. So it pulled up those translations. For you, you may prioritize some other types of um, translations and that's fine. If I wanted to add another translation, I could just uh, take this plus sign and all of my Bibles that I have within my Logos package are here. So if I wanted to add a King James or a New Living, I can do that and have that show up on the screen. To the left of me, what you see is the passage study guide. And what this guide does is it has given me 30 to 40 hours worth of biblical research, probably more than that, just on 1 Corinthians 13. So Jada and I were talking when I showed it to her earlier that you could really just sit in here because it's so much. So I mm -hmm. want to run through some of this. And then I want to go um, into the actual passage and we're going to look up love and we're going to look up some things about love. But I want to really just share and outline like this passage study guide. So here we see uh, various cross references. And Jada, please feel free to interject me at any time. OK, yes, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there are some cross references here. Uh, there is the commentaries. So these commentaries are the commentaries that are within my library and logos. They can separate them by the priority, by the denomination, the series, the author. But sometimes I like to look at it um, by denomination, which I think is really cool because sometimes mm -hmm. you want to see how other people speak about or have written about or how they view particular scripture um mm -hmm. so. plus i think on this too um jennifer is when you when you choose denomination even if you know as you're reading that content and that commentary it's really helpful to know the perspective of that author 
because yeah. you have to know theologically what what their approach is to certain doctrine. And so when you're like, oh, this is Anglican or this is Pentecostal, then you, they're going to have um, maybe some different interpretations of certain scripture. And so it's good to know the background of who who you're reading. Absolutely. It's so good to know. And you can really just make a determination, you know, because all commentaries aren't commentaries that we're going to follow, right? Right. You can make the determination on what you are in align with by breaking down your commentaries. And then uh, Logos will highlight what's called important passages of scripture. So they are, what they're doing is highlighting passages that relate to whatever it is that I typed in the passage guide. So it will highlight those important passages and it breaks it down by, for example, um, shared cultural concepts, which we see all throughout 1 Corinthians. Um, then as we continue to go on, it gives me parallel passages. So some of the parallel passages to 1 Corinthians 13 are like Romans 12, 9 and 10. You mm -hmm. Let love be without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. test evil cling to what is good love one another deeply as brothers and sisters take the lead in honoring one another mm -hmm. and I can continue to go through here and I can see parallel passages that are paralleled within the Pauline letters to first Corinthians 13 then logos will also highlight the biblical people that are mentioned within a passage so uh, Paul is highlighted. So this is information of the scriptures on Paul that I can uh, pull up, but I can also pull up these different graphs and photos and things of that nature uh, with Paul. Mm -hmm. A child is mentioned, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Christ church. And as I continue to scroll, um, if there was a biblical place that was mentioned, let's say if that particular chapter was uh, mentioning Israel or mm -hmm. a certain type of place, it will have information on that biblical place. Now with the journals, uh, these are outside resources uh, that have written on a particular passage of scripture or a topic. And so as we see here, there are journal articles that I can read on 1 Corinthians 13. And then in the passage guide, it pulls out the important words. And so here it has highlighted some important Greek words within 1 Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. And if I want to know how these are uh, translated um, and, and how they sound, Glossa. I can just mm -hmm. click this button and it will give me the pronunciation. So if I want to actually do a word study, which we're going to do some of that in a minute, um, I could I could put my cursor over this. And if I click it, it will open up a word study on that particular word. Now, and this is important. We we talked about this a bit when we were using some of our other online tools, because, for example, when you're hovering over this word for prophecy, you can see that the way Paul used it in this passage, it's always used that way in scripture. Mm. Um, but then if you go back up to tongue, I think, glossa, yeah, you will see sometimes that means language. Um, yeah. And even though this might not be a part of what you're studying, then you're like, well, where does it mean language? Oh, maybe when the Bible is talking about speaking in tongues, some of those times referring to languages, like just even being able to see that this word sometimes means language um, can really alter some significant things that you believe about, you know, what these things are saying in scripture. And so um, it's really interesting to see how many times a word is used or translated the way it is in the passage you're studying. Because if you were studying a passage um, and maybe in this particular passage, the word was speech, um, and then you took that word and said, oh, this this always means speech in scripture. Then 
you would be misled because you would have to say, oh, in this passage, this is like the only time this word is used that way. It normally means this. And so this little diagram of how often a word is used in a certain translation or translated a certain way, I think is really cool. I use it all the time. I love it. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to actually put it up here uh, and so we can see it even better. Um, one thing I love about uh, Lagos, I can just kind of click and drag and move things around <laughs> um, the screen. Okay, so now to the left, you see a Bible word study on that mm -hmm. word glossa that we talked about. Mm -hmm. I click more, it's going to give me more definitions. And these definitions come from the Greek and Hebrew, um, the, the Greek lexicons that are within the Lagos library. Mm -hmm. And I see how it's defined. But then the cool thing is this chart mm -hmm. uh, where we see that this word is translated in some places to mean language and languages and speech. And le let's say if I decide to click on this red portion, it then shows me scripture where that word glossa is translated as language. Mm -hmm excuse me, all throughout Revelations, right? Mm -hmm. We see yeah. it translated as speech right here. Little First children. Time. Yeah. Yes. Let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. And here we see it where it's translated as tongue. Mm -hmm. And of course, all throughout Acts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm so uh, this is uh, really, really cool. And then mm -hmm. as we scroll, it will give us root words to that. Glossocomen. Glossocomen. Okay. Glossocomen. Yes, which means money box or purse. And. Heteroglossos. Which means speaking a foreign language. And it has the word glossos in it. Mm -hmm. So we could really just spend time here doing word studies. And one thing that's important, even as we yeah. were studying the Bible inductively, is that we're not skipping over things that we don't understand. Right. right. <laughs> you know, that we would actually pause. And what I love about Lagos is it allows us to pause and actually look up and do searches and really figure out more about what it is. And just to kind of veer off from the passage study guide a bit, and when I am in the actual uh, text, I'm in the CSB. So let me just close this Bible word study real quick. I just want to show you all this text. So I'm in the CSB and it says, if I speak human or angelic tongues, so there's this filter that we have in Lagos called the fact book filter. And the fact book filter is on. And what it allows me to do is every word that's underlined, I can put my cursor over it and it gives me a fact book definition of what it is. But if I click on it, it will open up information in the fact book. So the fact book is like our version of Google. Uh, what that simply means is we can, instead of going to Google for your theological research, mm. else has something Don't called the it. fact book, right? Because you never know what you're going to get. That's the thing. I mean, this is so good because, you know, people will say, oh, I want to learn more about this, learn more about that. And then they go and Google it. And, you know, if you're really familiar with all of the voices and the authors and things like that, you you can find certain people that you're looking for. But sometimes it's not anybody that you know that, that you're reading or somebody's blog post or, you know, somebody's um, personal opinion on something. And it, it can become really difficult to try to navigate what's true. Do these people believe what I believe? Like to decipher what to keep and what to throw away. So this is a really cool tool internally. 
Absolutely. I know uh, I would always uh, share this joke, like when you Google tabernacle, it doesn't come up that way anymore now. They must have changed it. But there was a time I would Google, I Google tabernacle. And one of the first things that came up was this club in Atlanta. (laughs) (laughs) You like, "Mm, not that one. the tabernacle, right? And so I would always say, you want to probably just check the fact book first, okay? (laughs) You get your information. But the fact book is a tool in uh, Logos that just allows you to learn the biblical facts. You can type in a place, a person, a thing. You can access the fact book like I just did from the actual Bible text. Or if you look to the far left of the screen where you see these icons and I have it highlighted, fact book is right under the Bible. So you could always click it. And if it's just something you're just looking up, um, any anything, it could be a biblical person, it could be a concept, mm-hmm. it could be, um, I know when Lent came out, um, with, when that happened around Easter, I wanted to know more about Lent. I just mm-hmm. typed in Lent and all the facts about Lent came up. Yeah. So it's an easy way for us to study and uh, just get the quick facts. And so some of the things in the fact book, it's not as extensive as when you are pulling up a passage from the passage guide, but it is going to give you the facts and it'll highlight some key passages, some important words um, in the Greek or Hebrew that may be related to that. Um, biblical senses, events, um, <laughs> it'll highlight events that relate to that. Um, dictionary definitions, journals, and sermons, even. Sermons, that's my favorite part. Yes, I love this sermon. So these sermons that they have, like you can get some sermons from some church fathers Mm -hmm. and really read on it. So for example, um, Augustine of Hippo, there's a sermon on taming the tongue that is within the Logos library. And you can pull that up and read on um, someone else's sermons. And then in the passage guide, you could also find sermons as Mm -hmm. well. Yep, I love that part. So I wanna actually come back to this and just make sure I show all of this to you. So the literary typing, uh, we know that the Bible it's written in different genres. It's it's written in, in different genres of scripture. And so when we're reading uh, scripture in a literary, with the literary genre in mind, what's great about the fact, what's great about uh, the passage guide is this going to break down the genre. And mm-hmm. uh, we see first Corinthians is a letter to a community. And we see that this portion uh, is the body of it. And then if you go on to chapter 13, there's an expositional argument and it tells you what that is. That's a text that interprets various Old Testament passages in the service of a larger theological argument. Mm -hmm. And then if allusion is used, um, it says in chapter five, allusion, is used, uh, a reference to an Old Testament passage that is not a direct quote. So that's really helpful. Um, Mm -hmm. If there's figurative language, uh, which we see all throughout the letters and all throughout scripture, Lagos is going to show me the figurative language, what that is. So a person as love, when uh, personification, um, personification, a tongue as language, symbol as Paul, like it's giving me areas mm. where there's so figured good. language that you could just sit in. And mm-hmm. then cultural concepts. We know that the scriptures were written, uh, it wasn't written to us, it was written for us. Mm-hmm. It was written to other cultures. And so the beautiful thing is Logos in its study will highlight cultural concepts as well in the passage study guide. And then we see ancient literature. So again, for Bible geeks who really like to dive into 
the uh, apostolic fathers and church fathers mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. You can click on that on these hyperlinks and you can spend some time reading what ancient literature has to say about a particular passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. And am I boring y'all yet? This is a lot. <laughs> it's so great. It's so much. It's so great. I'm kind of an information nerd. I love it. I love and, it. And it's not, and you don't have to take it all in at once. You just know it's available. It's and this available. is this is truly why, you know, the study of scripture is inexhaustible. Like you yes. can't ever, I mean, this we're still in one verse, <laughs> one set of verses in one chapter. And so it's just so much. And then I think that I love it because the more you study, the more you'll start to see those overlaps. You're like, oh, you know, this sermon popped up when I was studying this other passage or these references are similar to another passage. So what's the connection? And so I just think we get so many different facets on how to study. So I love it. Yes, It's so many different facets. Um, I love the sermon outlines for those uh, who are Bible teachers and, and and preachers and things like that. You can see other uh, teacher sermon outlines or even other sermons. You know, if I want to look at how uh, Charles Spurgeon preached on in, in September 4th, 1881, mm. a sermon on love's labors. If I want to read what he said, like I'm able to do that. And all of this is within the passage guide. So that's one thing that you could mm -hmm. really spend some time in. And I always like to show that first when showing Lagos, because if you're not using Lagos for anything else, this is a really great place to start. Mm -hmm. So now I want to transition over into uh, some other ways that if I wanted to study this, we could study it. And I was showing Jada earlier, our workflows. Mm -hmm. um, one of the workflows that is my favorite is the inductive Bible study. And so uh, if you know me, you know, I love inductive Bible study and I know Jada loves it as well. And so I'm going to put that same chapter in uh, this inductive Bible study workflow. So let's say I want to study this inductively. What Logos does is this. it this pulls up an entire <laughs> workflow. So we know inductive Bible study is an investigative way of studying the scripture mm -hmm. through observation, interpretation, and application. But the beautiful thing that Logos does is it will walk you through the observation stage step by step by step. Okay, so we need to read the passage multiple times, right? We want to get context. And so Logos will remind you to do that, okay? And it will pull up the passage in a translation so you could read it. And then it gives you a place to uh, write your questions or your insights and take note of all of the things that are confusing or surprising or challenging. And you can record your things here and you can always go back to this. It will save in your notes. And that's the beautiful part. Yes. Like for me, part. as often as I teach, you know, sometimes eight months goes by a year, two years. I'm like, didn't I do something on love at some point? And so, yes. yeah, to be able to revisit, pick up where you left off, enhance it, you know, just to be able to well, save all that in one spot is... Well, Everything. speaking of saving it, you know what? what's really cool, a, a great cool way to save it is layouts. So let's say I am in this inductive study and I want to be able to easily come back to it, or maybe I'm doing this inductive study in preparation for a teaching. I can go to layouts and I can save this as Jada webinar. Mm -hmm. And so now, if you look to the left where that check sign is, it says Jada webinar. So I can always click on layouts and find the, the layout and it will go back. The screen will go back to how I left it. I love and it. So, and these little, okay, so these little 
uh, gray shapes? Are those just formats for actually how the text is laid out? Yep. So let's say I, I wanted like it to be four tiles. I can do that. And if I had more things up, it would shape. Oh, out break it out for that. you. Mm -hmm. okay. It would break it, break it out for me. But what you want to do before you close out your layout, you want to hit this uh, thing called update active. Mm -hmm. So it will save the last way you did it. And so as you see for me on the left, I have a lot of different like layouts mm -hmm. from teachers and different conferences I may have spoken at and things like that. So I can click on that and I could always go back. Okay, Jennifer, what did you do at TGC Women's? I could go mm -hmm. to TGC Women's layout or Proclaim Truth or, you know, different things of that nature. So that's a great way to be able to always go back to what you've studied and be able mm -hmm. to access it. In addition to the fact that this stuff will all save and you can access it in your notes. So you could go to tools and your notes would be under um, content and tools. Cool. So I'm always able to go That's back. Great. And every workflow that you start also saves on your homepage as well. So you will never lose. Oh, anything. so you have a shortcut. Yeah. Yep. So you have another shortcut. Um, so yes, this is one of the layouts, um, one of the uh, workflows I meant that will walk me through inductive Bible study step by step by step. Again, Logos likes to save us time um, by identifying things for us, pulling out things for us, to make it easy, mm -hmm. uh, easier. Um, as oh, I'm yeah. examining like, his hit that time. I was just about to say, yeah, click that time. Yep. Up, Cause I love talking about historical context. Yeah. You know. So the timeline tool, I just clicked on that and it pulled up a timeline. And if there's something specific that I'm looking for, within it. And I want to know like the time that it's happening, I can type it in find and it will go to that specific time period. Oh, wait, did it pull up a timeline? I don't think my screen. Is oh, showing. okay. Let me, let me do a new share. Hold on. Do you see it? Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be up there like, so Jehu's line was actually started. They'll be like, Jay, they don't have nothing to do with nothing. This is the problem with all this information. <laughs> what does Jehu have to do with this? Like, just trust me, it's amazing. <laughs> but you know, it's really cool to see, you know, for you, even as you prepare and for, you know, as, as you share to really have, you know, an even greater uh, context of it. So Absolutely, because we studied First Peter this past semester. Mm -hmm. And listen, understanding the persecution that Christians were under, what was coming for Peter to be like, listen, this is to everybody in exile. Here's how I want to encourage you. Being able to look at what was happening around them, it, yeah. it was not a light encouragement. They were in the midst of, you know, really being under attack for their faith and so these things are important because when you start looking through these you can a quick glance like some of these kings you know what was happening attacks there was war going on and so it just helps to paint a picture absolutely I love this and you you seem like more of a timeline geek than I am so I am <laughs> I love it I love it so I'm going to go back to the main uh, Lagos screen. Hold on. Let me see. Let me stop and actually do a new share. Uh, okay. That is still on the timeline, right? No, I see it now on the main page. Okay. All right. Okay, so there's a couple of more things because we're not going to be able to get through everything. Um, I wanted to make sure we covered what we needed to cover in an mm -hmm. hour. Um, but Somebody just asked what version this is. is. This Did you say it was 10? Yes, um, so this is Logos 10. Okay. Yes, so 10 is the latest version that we are on and I'm on a diamond um, library. And I'll explain the differences between the libraries in just a moment. Uh, so what do I want to show you guys? Okay, 
So Jada, I have to ask you this. Do you have a large print library? Like you have a lot of books. I do. Okay. So I want to show you something really cool within our library. Are those my Bible studies? Some just popped up. Yeah, I'm about to show you. So <laughs> mama, I didn't made it. I'm in Lagos. <laughs> Somebody so, text mama. The cool thing about Logos is I have, and my husband, we are bibliophiles. That means like we have tons of books everywhere, mm -hmm. bookshelves in different parts of the house, all the things that I still study from. So I have a Logos library where I'm accessing all of my books here because you paid for them in the package. Mm -hmm. So you can access all of your books, but I also want to make use of the books and the studies that I have within my print library. So how do you do that? Well, you can go to library and I already pulled you up, um, but I typed in Jada Edwards to see what would come up. And some of your Bible studies came up and I was just like, hmm. Some old books in there too. Yes, oh. yes. So let's say I just happen to have this when love's in view, you know, with you and your husband, right? Mm -hmm. And I happen to have that in my print library. I can click this and I can add it to my print library catalog. And so what that allows me to do is if I'm searching for something or, or for a particular topic, I can also search and it will pull up a search within my print library. So for oh. example, within that particular book that I just added, what's something that you're talking about in it? Well, it's about dating relationships. It's about choosing the right spouse by being healthy as an individual, that kind okay. of stuff. Okay. So let me just go to uh, my search tool here. Do you all see that? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to go to books because I want to search my books. And I'm just going to type in dating and relationships. And then I'm going to hit enter. And what Logos has done first it's pulled up information on this topic for all of my downloaded books. So my downloaded books are the books that come with my Logos library. Okay. So these are the books that are downloaded within my Logos. But it's also <laughs> pulled out the introduction from When Love's in View and this book that is within my print library. It's giving me 30 oh, wow. results. And so the cool this thing, is cool. Is I can then click here and I can see, okay, where it's actually mentioned. So for example, chapter five in this book. And so what that allows me to do is then go to my bookshelf and grab that book and then open that up to chapter five, because I am doing some research on dating and relationships. Okay. That's cool. So I am cataloging my books that print, you have. theological books as well that I have. And another easy way to do it, if you have the Logos app, it allows you to now scan the ISBN number on the back of your books and add them um, to the print library um, portion of your Logos. The only catch is it has to be a book that is found within Logos. So that's yeah. the only catch. Right. It has to be a theological book. It can't just be right. a regular novel yeah that but is cool I love it great way uh to do some research on some different things so yeah um we want to study with intention we want to use the books within our logos library but we also want to make use of what we have on our shelves as well yeah now for my writers um this is also important. I do a lot of writing. I know Jada does. Uh, and this is um, just been a game changer um, as I am writing. So I'm going to pull up uh, my Microsoft Word. Give me one second and get a new document. <laughs> and 
the beautiful thing I love about logos that makes it easy when we're writing and studying is that I can be in a Bible or any of the books. And let's say I want to put this passage in my document. I can highlight and click copy. And then I'm going to stop the share because I'm going to do a new share so you all could see my Word document. Then I'm going to click paste. And what did Logos do? As I scroll down to the bottom, it has already cited it for me. So it yes. takes care of all of that as well. Mm -hmm. And you can actually set it up so that it can cite how you want it to cite. So mm -hmm. if you're using APA, Turabian, whatever it is, you can make it um, choose how you want it to cite. That's cool. I love it. That has been a, a game changer as, as well in studying and writing and all of the things. Yeah. So I love so this layout. I really do, Lucy. And I think um, I'm looking forward to it uh, for the fall. So the women of 1CC, uh, yes. get ready. Because we pulled out our camera and Bible, my actual literal Bible on camera. And I was marking it up last semester now. Got my logos. About to get my HDMI cable. And look, and y'all gonna be like, "This is 18 windows." Jada got up. What are we listen, talking about? and you can highlight everything right here. There's lots of different ways about to be trouble that you can highlight. You can go like this, and you can um, click this uh, little uh, pen and open up a whole highlight tool that will allow you to highlight in different ways so All however, these colors just make my heart jump every Ooh. however you want to highlight and because we love inductive bible study look at this the inductive precept yes way of highlighting oh my gosh. in here so wherever i see holy spirit mentioned i can highlight it that way jesus christ i can put my cross and it will always you're always able to find your highlights by going mm -hmm. in to notes. So ladies, I know it was just so much that I shared um, tonight and I have only touched the surface of what Logos has to offer and how we can use it to study and even write sermons. There's so much here. Like I told Jada, I have to spend some time with her when she gets some time and show her even more mm -hmm. just here because there's so many, um, ways that we could use this. But before I go into how we can actually uh, take advantage of Logos, do we have any questions? Or is there anything else that someone wants to see? Yes, Leslie, I see. It, it, it is a game changer. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you could really just unmute yourself. Okay. All right. We're good. We are good. Is there time to talk about customizing homepage? Yes, Belinda. Um, let's talk about it. Uh, what's your question? If you can unmute yourself, or do I need to unmute you guys? <laughs> I'll go um to the homepage and uh kind of show you again. Oh, I want to move things around in a noisy place. Uh yes. So with the home um with the cus with the home page you can kind of do some drag and drops. If I had a lot of things on the dashboard, I would mm. be able to do that. I only have two, so I can't really <laughs> do a lot. Uh, there is a tablet version, um, so uh, that it can be accessed on every um, uh, tablet, uh, iPad, all of those things. You can access it that way as well. Um, even Android, guys, we can. Even Android. Even Android. That's what I have. I have an Android, so you know. Yes, yes. So Android. The Rebel. 
Lord, you got an Android out. You got to get, mm -hmm. get saved, man. Girl, y'all need to get out that coat. We're going to see in glory. In glory, we're going to see. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Android users. You Listen, we here, here to keep your conversations green. <laughs> I, I'm never texting you. <laughs> I'm always, always will email. No, I'm, I'm joking. But yes, you can customize this however you would like. So if there was a reading plan that I was on within Logos, I, a daily devotional, a course mm -hmm. that I was taking, Logos has courses. Um, so I love it because for those that don't have an opportunity to maybe go to seminary, or things like that. Like there are resources where we can still learn things and learn about theology and how to study the Bible and different things like that. And Logos is a great resource uh, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to briefly share uh, for those that may be interested in getting Logos, Logos or Logos. And let me just explain that. Uh, the original Greek translation or way of saying it is logos, but people all over say logos. So however you want to say it, you know, however it, comfortable you are in saying it, I say logos. Sometimes I say logos. It really just depends on the day. So uh, can you see that uh, where it says logos 10 is here? Yes. Okay. So there's lots of different packages with Logos, but I'm only going to show you two tonight. However, um, I'm going to give you a special website for all of the friends of Jada Edwards uh, for you to go and you can look at these packages in more detail. But there are two that I want to highlight specifically for this group that I think would be really helpful. So all friends of Jada Edwards, which all of you are, receive 15% off if you want to use Logos or if you even want to upgrade. So some of you may already have it. You may have a different version and you want to upgrade. You are able to receive 15% off. You receive a lifetime personal license. Um, so that simply means that Logos is something that you own for life. Once it's paid off, um, I know of people who will their Logos accounts to their children because it's like if they have, it's like if you have purchased this large library, right? And you would want to pass that library down. 30 day money back guarantee and free online training and support at logos.com slash pro or if you attend uh, some of my other webinars, like I'm always showing different things. So um, it's another way to get some uh, training. And there are monthly payment options. So I'm going to share two packages, uh, the Logos Silver. I always like showing this uh, because it scares people when they see the print book value. And But that is what it is. It's the value. Like if you had went and bought $13,000 worth of books. So Logos Silver is what we call our word study library. It's going to include a ton of Greek and Hebrew lexicons in addition to a lot of Bibles, a lot of atlases, a lot of <laughs> commentaries, okay? But the actual price for this event is $52 per month for 15 months. And then you own it, it's yours for life, okay? And then if you are in any level of ministry, this is where I started. Um, the ministry library, the Logos Gold, it is formulated with the minister in mind. And the print book value is almost 20K. The regular price for this is $15.49. And this is the special event price, but you can own it for $73 a month for 15 months. And that is the Logos Gold. So we have different packages for every type of budget. The only difference is the amount of books and resources within your library. So what I didn't get to show tonight is the Logos Bronze, which is a Bible study library. It's a little um, cheaper than the Logos Silver, 
or the Logos uh, Starter, then the Logos Diamond. I'm presenting from Logos Diamond. A lot of pastors use Logos Diamond and then Logos Portfolio. And so the libraries just continue to grow and become more expansive and it gives you more resources. And Lucy, and again, how easy, how easy, I'm sorry to interrupt. How easy is it to upgrade? Like today, this one fits in my budget and then next year or six months from now, how, how easy can I go to the next level? Super easy. All mm -hmm. you do is Logos will never charge you for the same book twice. So all you would do is pay the difference. So there, uh, if you were upgrading from Logos Gold to maybe Logos Platinum, which I think that's the next one up. Platinum is more of our academic library. It includes a lot of resources for seminarians and things of that nature. So if I upgrade it, from one level to the next, I'm only paying the difference. So, uh, and, and you could easily do that by just logging into your Logos account or uh, by calling us and we can uh, take care of it. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, is the inductive Bible study tool available at all levels or what's the starting level for that one, if you know? I believe the starting level is bronze, but I will double check um, to make sure um, that that workflow is within um, uh, anything lower than bronze. But mm -hmm. I believe that workflow, you can find it in bronze or above. Okay. Great question. Mm -hmm. uh, and then logos.com slash J Edwards. If somebody can put that in the chat. Um, that site with this discount is going to be available until the 28th at midnight Pacific Standard Time. And you can just enter in uh, this uh, discount code. Or if you just want to call Logos and actually uh, put in an order, you give them Edwards 623 and they will uh, process the discount for you. And if you have any questions about all of it, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is jennifer.tyler at logos.com. My desire is to simply to just serve, um, to serve all of you with your individual needs and answer all the questions that maybe you didn't get answered tonight or see if you already have logos and you're ready to upgrade and you want to know how much it's going to be feel free to shoot me an email. I will be more than happy to assist you and help you. And then, hey, if there's other questions as you are uh, continuing and you're in your logos and you have it and you're like, Jennifer, how to do this? I always tell people, just drop me a DM. I'll get to it and I'll be able to help you. Yeah, I love this tool. I love the passion that you have, Jennifer. So I thank you. This is a part of my passion, just you know, inviting women into theology, you know, because we we like the depth of scripture too. We, we're not yeah. all reading Proverbs 31 every day. Yeah. Um, and particularly- like I have my shirt on. I'm gonna show y'all my big belly, by the way. I'm like <laughs> pregnant, pregnant. Because black girls love theology too. <laughs> okay, come on, a whole piece Stretched of out. merch. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, just uh, women, first of all, the- invited yeah. them into that theological space and then women of color I love it I love it I think our we need it certainly every generation behind us needs it and so whatever however you can be a good steward of that then you guys decide what you want to do now later invite a friend um and so yeah I think it's just an option it's an option and a tool that that um that is available to us and I love it and I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us tonight uh, it's my pleasure again that discount yep Dala, dahlia put put it in there okay <laughs> awesome well ladies have a great night thank you jada for your time and i will send out this recording as well if you guys want to re-watch it but thank you for doing this, this yes, it welcome. yes it was it was y'all have a good night Right, Jennifer, really quick question. Um, I missed your last conversation that you had with, I think her name is Yana, about like preparing for like sermons because it was rescheduled and I had to miss it and I was so sad. Do you have a recording of that or no? So actually with, with Yana, we uh, did not get 